गाइज हाउ आर यू आई होप यू ऑल आर फाइन सो गाइज जर्मन ज्ञान दिस इंडिपेंडेंस डे इज गिविंग यू ह्यूज डिस्काउंट फॉर ऑल द लेवल्स वेदर इट इज ए वन ए टू बी वन बी टू सी वन और सी टू So just go and enroll at DM form DME for more details. Hello guys you are watching German Gyan my name is Nidhi Jain and guys I am here today with an amazing 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 Q&A session and a live session interview kind of video Hi. with Gyana from Germany so this gonna be really amazing so yeah without wasting time let's go and start the video Interesting facts this is Nidhi Hi how are you Hi very good can you hear me can you see me is everything fine yeah. Am I audible to you? Yes, I can hear you. Whoa, <laughs> great! So um, today yes. I host a stream, but I am actually the guest today. I will yeah, be asking a lot of questions you. today about studying abroad, studying in Germany, life in Germany. How it's how does it feel like to be German? So I hope you guys enjoy it. So Nitki, please introduce yourself. Yeah, basically, I am the owner of German Guiana, and today I will be asking you the questions of my own students who have been having questions regarding you. So let's start. I hope okay. they will be loving it. So let's start. I have basically choose twelve questions. Got around fifty, sixty questions, but I have selected only twelve because we have a limited time. So yeah, let's. <laughs> Are you ready? Sure. Yes, I'm always ready. <laughs> So the first question is: I did a BA in mechanical engineering from a private college and want to do an MS from Germany. I also want to settle here. What should I do? <laughs> That's a big question, actually. It has like three in one. Okay. So first thing we need to define is if your university is accredited. So that is something you can check on Anabin website if the university is accredited and recognized in Germany. If yes, then you can try your chances and apply. Then you have to define uh what is your GPA because if your GPA is high, you can aim for public universities and private universities and high rank private universities. But if your GPA is not high enough, then I'm sorry. It's like natural survival. Only the best students get into the best colleges. Huh? Okay. You can compensate your GPA if you take a GMAT or a GRE in some universities. Huh? Okay. Next step: your major, mechanical engineering major. In Germany, the studies are consecutive. If you want to do a Master of Science or Master of Arts, you need to choose a major which you did in your bachelor. It has okay. to be the same, or it has to be very similar. Uh, you cannot go far away that you did bachelor of medicine and suddenly you want to do master in logistics. That is weird for Germans. They want you to create a profession. They want you to specialize and be a specialist in one field. Consequently, you have to continue studying mechanical engineering or a different type of engineering. So um, you can read different options for your major there. So first, we talked about accreditation of your university, then your GPA. then um the stream but then you have to figure out can you afford studies in germany because many students when they go abroad they somehow forget that they have to pay rent that they have to eat <laughs> there is insurance telephone transport bills you know sometimes you want to buy yourself something but they forget about it huh? and this is something that exactly. you shouldn't uh you know forget uh, because the germany has probably higher expenses than your country so um keep this in mind the minimum in germany to survive i wouldn't say to live i would say to survive is a blocked account blocked account is around 10200 euro for a year every year you have to put money back and it's approximately 800 euro per month to take out if you live in a small city i don't know in ham probably it's enough 800 euro per month for accommodation and food but if you live in munich it's going to be just your flat <laughs> that's it so you need to carefully define which city you want to go to because hamburg frankfurt and munich are the most expensive berlin is catching up 
and then the rest of the cities follow um, expenses wise and also that munich is a so expensive city there in germany <laughs> i would say munich is like something between switzerland and austria or like austria you should not consider germany as one country every single city is different famous for their own thing they have a different dialect uh they don't talk to each other <laughs> uh famous for a different industry and pretty in its own way you know uh köln is next to holland hamburg is next to denmark munich is next to austria italy what not berlin is crazy so everything is very different but then it also depends which major you want to do because if you want to exactly. do engineering and you want to do automotive you want to work in automotive industry then you better go to stuttgart or Munich but if you want to see your future in logistics then maybe it's better you go to Hamburg like it doesn't make sense to study a certain major which which is not in demand in the territory where you are but then again you know, we're talking about Russia we're talking about India we're talking about different countries our countries are big <laughs> a small part of my country is the whole germany so if you really want to apply for jobs and in industries in different cities just go for it germany is like what Eight hours you can cross. <laughs> yeah, and uh, last but not least, yeah, budget for accommodation, but budget for studies. So there are universities which are free. There are universities which are cheap. There are universities that are medium, and there are universities which are very expensive. The more you invest, the more you get in some instances. But what you invest, it depends. Either you invest money, or you invest your time, because you can get into private university fast. but you can spend a lot more time your time to get into public exactly. in coronavirus times march intake was canceled for public universities they didn't switch online they canceled it it means that if you wanted to start you just skip 6 months of your life private universities started studies already online all my students finish the semester they arrive on the second semester and they only have a third left and they have a job seeking visa So who is the winner because my students won on accommodation costs. You see, so it's always a trade off. You either invest your time or you invest your money. money. And there's no exactly there's no such thing as 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 a bad university. There's good public schools, there's bad public schools, there's good private schools, there's bad, there's highly ranked, there's not every university has its own customer base. And which university you fit is according to your work experience, your GMAT your gpa your stream the years of study cts and your ability to present yourself daily i'm i'm editing the scholarship and motivational statements of my students and sometimes i'm like oh my god um the cvs hey guys you need to research a bit more in advance before you apply to university in germany uh, the country has a different standard and last but not least settling down yes so germany i think is pretty much foreigner friendly not only i think i know um and everything is relative you don't just think i want to study in germany mostly you consider i want to study abroad and then you're looking at uk at australia us canada and everything and you compare the prices you compare the stay back visa opportunity to bring your spouses and everything in this case and with the political situation and with the way coronavirus was prevented germany wins in comparison huh? because if i finish my education in, in england with brexit am i sure that in 3 years i will be able to get the job seeking visa because the laws are pretty volatile in australia or in america it's super hard to get visa so the visa denial rate is high and secondly do i want to enter the point based system a lottery to to stay in, in the country where i invested 80000 year i don't know i'm a fan of germany in germany after 5 years of being there studying and paying taxes you get permanent residence and after 7 years you're allowed to apply for a german passport like i did because i was russian now i'm german okay my monologue my monologue is over i hope i answered your question <laughs> large one let me know um, if everything was clear or not <laughs> it was clear i hope and so many people are asking so many questions so we will answer these question at the end so yeah sure. let's go to the second question second question is does a btech in a state government college gives any advantage while applying for masters abroad as compared to private colleges no it's the same it's always 19 minimum working days 
uh, to be able to wait for visa, but it can take two, three, four, five, six months. It all depends only on your documents from your country. They are checking if you are financially solvent and if you have something to come back to. You are not just leaving the country for good. Um, in immigration office, they receive your files by surnames. <laughs> so okay. it actually depends how long you're waiting. Only depends on your surname. So if you have a surname starting with S, Singh, you wait the longest. So if okay. your surname is A or I don't know K, you wait one depends month. Depends on the alphabet. Yeah, yeah. Education never matters. A university must be state accredited and recognized. It's a number one priority. Um, if it's not, uh, you might get trouble uh, either now or after when you arrive. Okay. Yeah, but nah. Mostly the reason of denial or the reason of delay is you and your documents from your country, not in Germany. <laughs> Yeah. So the next question is, what is a procedure if a person is Indian and want to go to private college? What's the procedure? Okay. So private. Um, first of all, any student, public or private, can check all universities in DAAD university websites. If they're state accredited and recognized, they are in the list. So that's also a good point. If they're not recognized, they're not there. Um, be very careful with marketing of the private universities. There are many private universities that are not the best for you, but they spend a lot of money to be out there in the internet. So make your research better. Um, so after you made your research and found like some options you like, you can either contact universities directly or you can ask help of the educational advisor or an agent. So you have to know one thing. If you decide from the beginning if you want to do it yourself or you want to ask help of someone. Because universities in Germany have a politics. If a university student contacts them, it's his personal data. If the okay. agent contacts them, they can negotiate for them something because they have contacts inside the university. That's what I do for my student. I don't want that my student applies and he's considered a number. One out of 100 people who applies. I don't want that. What I want is that I present him. I said, yeah, our GPA is not that high, but he's a sportsman. He has a family business. He helps them out. He has a dream to do digital marketing. So I'm always telling a story about my students. Of course, I, I am an agent, so I like to present my students. I like to sell my students, and this is what I do for them. But be very careful. Either you contact them directly or you ask an agent. But if you ask an agent, select them do a research because not always all agents are good as well huh? yeah business <laughs> yeah. Very, and yeah very important thing you have told because people normally choose anyone as an agent or they will directly directly conduct, uh, basically go to the colleges so thank yeah. you so much for sharing this thing next question is what is your criteria for private colleges and what about accommodations so there's different private schools, right? There's business schools, there's engineering schools, uh, there's low rank, middle and high rank. So there is a school I work with, they need 700 GMAT. <laughs> We're not gonna apply it for the rest of the universities. But minimum criteria is private universities mostly teach in English, know your language. So you need to have at least 6.5 IELTS for good master programs. Yes, you can find for six, 5.5, but what you get at the end is not good. So why don't you invest at the beginning in your language? So English language, I would say 6.5 is a minimum to be able to understand everything and graduate. <clears throat> then, um, of course, budget costs from 6 to 12,000 euro per year. Then you need to have a GPA, a passing grade, or some universities, as an example, I work with Hamburg School of Business, they don't even consider anybody below 75% GPA. They say, okay. no. Uh, so yeah. that's, yeah, study hard, go pro. Then the next universities require work experience, sometimes even for master. Uh, master sometimes up to 12 weeks, but MBA mostly two to three years work experience are required. Um, and yeah, they look at your 10 plus two, your secondary edu uh, education as well. They look okay. at your bachelor, they look at your CV, they test you in the interview, your IELTS, your motivational statement, and as a package, 
they consider you. Make sure to look if the university has a deadline and make sure to look if university has a scholarship deadline and read attentively. German university, doesn't matter, private or public, they're German. They're super bureaucratic. If it's written that they want one PDF with all documents, you can't send them like this, 12 emails. They're going to block you and deny your admission. You need to create one PDF pretty and send it exactly how they want. With one of my students, we were writing the scholarship letter yesterday. A scholarship explicitly states, this is a scholarship for those who do not have sufficient funds. Please state, how come, why, um, and how are you willing to contribute to the university after you're there? Participate in the fairs, be your ambassador. So my student wrote a scholarship letter, but she wrote a motivational statement. I want this city, this university because of this. But the task was given. Mm -hmm. The task explicitly said you have to explain why you can't afford or what you can afford, what you can't. So you see, Germans are pretty straightforward. They give you the task, just complete it on time. Uh, so that's important to know. Um, and yeah, you can choose any majors in private universities. Um, it doesn't mean you qualify, but you can choose, you can try, you can apply. At least they talk to you. Uh, private universities talk to you, answer your questions, help you out, give you some opportunity to submit some documents later. And yeah, best of luck. The, the more... But you have to know that the more the, the better ranked the school is, the more expensive it is. So the best schools I work with are Jacobs University, HHL Leipzig, um, and EBS University. They cost the most, but then you get a higher salary once you graduate. So you should understand that education is an investment. And if you're willing to have a bright future, you need to invest. You know, common sense. All right. <laughs> question is this only that what are the best private universities of Germany and you have already told to them. Yes, there is more, of course. I'm trying to get to work with them because mostly agents, for example, in India, in Russia, they recommend the easy cases, the super easy private universities to get into. I try to get into the difficult ones so my students have a chance to study at the best. That's why I work with Hamburg School of Business Administration. I work with EBS Universität. I work with Hamburg Hochschule Leipzig. Also, the really good schools to consider for you would be Otto Beisham School of Management, WHO, then Mannheim uh, University, um, Frankfurt School of Finance, ESMT, um, Berlin School of Economics, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm trying to get into those as well. But these schools require you to have 600 GMAT at least even for master and Good don't master. forget about yeah, exactly for master and mba at least gmat is required for the best schools you have to present yourself better you have to have higher mm -hmm. results uh, these schools have deadlines these schools have gmat requirements and they also have quotas so they have a nationality quota and they have a quota for gender so okay. you can guess which which quota right now is the most difficult to enter Male Indian. It's understandable, <laughs> but yeah, you know, Germany is full of opportunities, especially for engineers. And many of my students come from commerce, IT, and engineering background from India. Doctors you know, having great opportunities, German doctors, nurses, doctors. Yeah. So to be a doctor, you need to study in German and you need to know German fully. So yeah. C1, um, C1 is not even enough. Like, the thing is, C1 is a language, but you need to pass a test for medical terminology in yeah. German. So it's not difficult to become a doctor in Germany if you're already a doctor. The only thing separating you from this is perfect German. Uh, we have a lack of doctors. We have minus unemployment rate for doctors. There's hospitals which are empty. So, yes. The future is bright, but again, you have to work in it, invest your time or invest you your have to study hard to learn money. more and more German in the perfection, right? Exactly. There is a school, uh, my friends, they actually teach medical German. It's very mm -hmm. cheap courses. And when you arrive, they teach you on campus medical German. And then they help you to get a position. They help you with medical tests and they help you to they introduce you to different hospitals. They help you to get a position. They are very nice people. 
But if anybody has a question about the doctors and anything, they can ask me, I will direct them to these right people, you know, because I deal with private education, but my friend is teaching German online. My other friend is helping international students to find a job. Another friend helps people to become doctors. So if I can help, they will. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So the next question is, how long is a master degree in Germany in private college? And what is the German language criteria if somebody wants a whole course in German? Okay. So every question of yours has like two or three inside. This is, this is interesting. <laughs> okay. So in Germany, there are different master programs. There is one year master, one and a half two and two and a half. There is MBA, which is one year, one and a half or two years. It all depends on the major. As an example, engineering is not possible to do in one year. Engineering must be either two years or 18 months plus thesis. Uh, same with logistics, uh, same with healthcare management as an example. But MBA is an exception. MBA is for working professionals, so it can be shorter. So to be able to qualify from the very beginning, to one year master, you must have a four year bachelor. You're okay. not allowed to study a one year master, master of science or master of arts, if you have a three year bachelor. It's not enough ECTS points. Three years is not enough. Sometimes four years is not enough as well. But that is something university checks and or I can check in the Ministry of Education website online. Uh, it stated what degree you have and how it's equivalent to Germany. If it's equivalent for German three years, one year, not possible. If it's quitting for four years, possible. This is step number one. Second step is, are you going for Master of Science or are you going for MBA? MBA is for working professionals. So if you have enough work experience, you can do this program. Uh, okay. Master of Science, Master of Arts is depending on your major, on your degree individually. Um, mostly private universities teach in English. Public universities teach in German, but there are like 10% exceptions. They teach in English as well or blended both so if you decide to study in english you need to submit 6.5 IELTS. if you decide to study in german you need to submit an equivalent test DAF or test as easy as that if you want to study in both languages like munich business school offers programs in two languages together you need to pass both tests and present them in the embassy so decide yeah. at the beginning german english or german english and these are the certificates you have to submit in the embassy as well uh, so from the very beginning. Okay. Fine. Thank you so much. The next question is, what is the condition for the private GISMA college in Germany? Gizma? Yeah. Okay. The condition. What, what do you mean exactly? Condition means how to enter in that co college. Uh, okay, so Gizma offers bachelor's, master's, and MBA programs, yeah. <laughs> and um, they are not, they're offering only a few degrees of their own, the German degrees, mostly they're offering franchise programs of British universities, or uh, Grenoble University as an example, so according to which program you choose, the entry requirements are either lower or higher, because generally British degrees have lower entry requirements than German. And Grenoble has a very high entry requirements because it's an executive MBA where you need to have, I think, five years or six years of work experience and high IELTS. So first decide on a program <laughs> and then check the entry requirements. But we're coming back to the same point. Budget, your GPA, minimum IELTS. It you always stays the same. Any school, yeah. exactly. <laughs> okay. What is the college life like in Germany? College life like, okay, it depends if you go to the big university or small. I studied in a small university, my bachelor, my master in Germany. It was cute. You knew all your classmates, your professors were your friends. You're like a family. Uh, so that is a private university. A lot of campus visits, a lot of um, industrial visits to companies, just a lot of action going on, always something. Public university in Germany is like public university in your country. You learn by heart. You come if you want to be there. If you don't, you don't. Um, it's a very theoretical approach. One professor, 100 to 500 students. So it depends where you go. No? There's also universities which have a campus. Um, it doesn't happen often in Germany. It's not practiced. But, for example, Jacobs University have a campus with food, even like they have a dorm. <laughs> um, so it's like an American experience a little bit. 
Um, there's a few more universities that have dorms. There is a big campus of SRH Heidelberg. There is a big campus of Köln Business School and Schiller International University. There you have it all. You have a gym, you have um, dorms, you have, I mean, not necessarily you have to live there, but you can also apply for a dorm. You have small classes, American approach to education. So yeah, you never know what you get. That's, that's why you should definitely contact someone who has been to Germany, who visited the schools, who knows the people there. Because whatever is said on the website, in the brochures and social media, sometimes, yeah, I'm not going to say anything bad, but we all try to sell ourselves, right? <laughs> we try, we, we try, you know, it's business at the end of the day. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Next question is, what is the counseling process for private medical colleges? Private medical colleges. So um, I only know one or two that teach only two or three programs in English, they're so expensive, it hurts. Like okay. 12,000 euro per year. Uh, okay. But the process would be the same. The thing is, agents don't work with them because they don't work with agents. So you're there on your own. You have to contact them directly on their website and um, inquire what is required for application by which deadline. And they will tell you if you need to go through Studienkolleg or not. Okay. Student college is a preparation year before studies. Um, yeah. Also, there's something important to know. Um, some degrees will not be recognized. As an example, if you did a bachelor in dentistry, you want to do a master in dentistry, they may recognize it, but they may not because it's not the same level. You didn't study with the same equipment. You didn't study with the same way the Germans study. So they might let you or tell you to relearn fully your bachelor. So you have to be okay. ready for the worst but aim for the highest. Yeah, always aim high. Try, throw yourselves out there for the scholarship and try and you never know, right? Write to 10 schools, maybe one or two replies. Go for them, you know? <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yeah, so the next question is, how can an Indian student study further in Germany and settle there too? Uh, study what, sorry? Suppose somebody is studying in Germany and then normal UG course. And now he wants mm -hmm. to or he wants to do PG, and then he's planning to settle there. So, a foreigner in Germany must always has a, have a full time activity. Either you're studying, on your work, or you're working, or you're searching for a job. There is no way that you can just chill and do nothing there. Nobody's going to extend your visa for that. Huh? So, you have to be in Germany for five years. You have, to do, do, you have to do something for five years, out of which three years, let's say, bachelor. Two years, you must work full time. You can get permanent residence only after you have worked 24 months full time. Okay. So that is that can be, together with the three-year bachelor. Yeah, Sorry? that can be permanent job or the part-time jobs. No, for part-time jobs, the visa is not extended. So okay. your visa will only be given if you have a minimum 2,500 euro salary per month and you work by profession which you graduated from. So okay. even if you get jobs, different jobs, but you go to immigration office, they can say no to extend your visa because they don't like the job you got. They want you to get a job by profession. That's why you educated, you went here to oh. educate yourself in this profession. No, it's not that easy. Germany this wants foreigners. But we want educated, bright, the, the best foreigners who are going to contribute to economy further. Consequently, the studies are deeply interconnected with the work. You can't just, you know, go crazy. You can start your own. You can start your own company. It's allowed. And I have friends, again, friends, who can help you start a company and get a blue card and offer your own services. Or you go and work by profession. But there's no way you finish a bachelor in finance and you go work in McDonald's. No. Okay, that is not allowed. For that, you will not no. get any visa extended or extension or anything. Extended? You can't. Um, you can only get it extended, of course, if you have a finance position in McDonald's. You know what I mean. You cannot just go and, and do restaurant jobs. Yeah. So um, you have one and a half months to search for a job after you graduate. In one and a half months, you can do any job you want. Absolutely. To get your money, to learn language, whatever. But the moment the time comes to exchange a job-seeking visa to work in visa, you must have a contract of a proper job. 
proper for your education. Okay. Yeah. So the second last question is: How often do international students get settled in Germany after MBA? So there is a research. <laughs> uh, you don't even have to think. Seventy-three uh, percent of students want to stay fully in Germany after any studies. Okay. Um, I have been there eleven years, and I have seen thousands of students graduating. Frankly speaking, everybody wanted to stay. <laughs> But not everybody had a opportunity. Not everybody had. Um, well, let's put it this way: just some people were so lazy, they didn't do anything to search for a job. These are the people that go. <laughs> the people who want to get a job, they always find it. You always get the network. You always get through professors, through your classmates, through your friends, through um, LinkedIn, Xing, Glassdoor, Stepstone, Facebook groups. You will get a job if you really want to. So yeah, only the ones that chill. I don't want to work, or they're yeah. lazy, or they they are in, insane. You know, they they keep doing the same thing again and again, and they still get, can't get a job. They continue doing the same thing again and again. You know, you should change. If something is not working, change your CV. See if it starts working better. Still not working, fix something else. Fix your processes. The moment you're fixing your processes, you're perfecting yourself, and then It's learn language a little bit. You know, they will manage. I have seen so many successful people, and many of them don't even speak German still. By the way, like not at all. One of these guys was here <laughs> in the chat. Okay. It was my friend. <laughs> He okay. got like amazing job at Boston Consulting Group, and without German. <laughs> so yeah, everything is possible. Yeah. So the last question is a very huge question. So be ready mm. for that. Whoa, 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 whoa! Bring it on. <laughs> I am an international student, admitted in a private university in Berlin. Does the Germany law allows me to change to public university even through my visa details that I have admitted in private school? So this is the thing that many students from India try to do. It's a very bad idea, very oh. bad. The reason is because you, they don't read the contract. Private university contract binds students for a year or two. It means you can't leave. You can leave, but you have to pay for two years anyway. And what students okay. do? They try. They leave to public, and then they get ten thousand euro bill in their post. And then they get a lawyer contacting them, and then they still have to pay. So it's not worth it. You still so you continue studying in public for free, but then you keep on paying that. So could have as well yeah. just stayed. So. Better to stay because in in Germany, when you don't pay something, they send you receipts with higher percentages and higher and higher and higher. And that is not something you should do. Um, first of all, check with a contract if the contract binds you for a year or two. And your pro if your program is four years, you can switch. But if your program yeah. is two years, there is no need or one year especially. Um, your visa allows you to switch. It means that if contract allows you, you can. But if contract doesn't. Don't risk your life and your visa because if you don't pay to um, collectors, you're out of the country. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So these <laughs> were the questions of the student. Now I'm asking the question which I'm having in kind of comment sections. So let sure. me, let. So somebody is saying that talk about bachelors, please. Talk about bachelors. All right. So. Uh, important that in Germany education is 12 years. Uh, in Russia is 11 years. In other countries, 11 or 12. There is American diploma, IB, IGCSE, different certificates. So what Germans do? They say we're gonna make a system where we say this is equivalent to our 10th grade and this is equivalent to our 11th and 12th. So India, Russia, and countries like that are equivalent to only 11 classes, not 12. It means the students are not allowed to study bachelor directly, just like that, unless universe you have a hundred percent GPA, you're super talented, you know. So you must study in a student college or a foundation or a, how you call it pathway. One year at a university in Germany to be able to get in after a university bachelor studies. Student college is public. You need to study uh, in German language. There's only two private student colleges in Germany. It's okay. Cologne Business School and University of Applied Sciences Europe in Israel. 
So only two offer in English language. Okay. But still some parts will be in German. So like that's pretty complicated. But then you can enter the public universities and the private. Otherwise, private universities have their own foundation, pathway, preparation programs. You need to fulfill them, but then you can't go to public and you go, can't go to other private. You must continue in that bachelor program in that university. This program is made on purpose. Huh? Yeah. So the, private, the degrees in Germany are three or four years long. Bachelor degrees, there are plenty in German and in English, and they offer huge uh, load of different majors, but only the majors which are in demand. So I'm working with two students right now from India and from Turkey, and they want psychology. Um, psychology is something that you study in a public university in German language. Okay. You are not studying in a university of applied sciences, psychology. It does not make sense. So what, public, what private universities offer is organizational and business psychology. You study human resources, organizational behavior, negotiation, and you study psychology as well. So you can become a manager, as an example, or you can work in HR. Uh, so now we're experiencing difficulties with them to find a program because they want in English the psychology. And I'm like, yeah. come on. <laughs> yeah. So private universities, they offer hospitality. They offer consulting programs, data science, IT, uh, computer science, marketing, fashion, luxurious management. Like you have everything. Bachelor, no problem at all to find the problem. Not the problem. The challenge is to get in. Because of not equivalence of our degrees in different countries to Germany. Uh, so that's the only thing. But yeah, you so can make somebody, it. <laughs> yeah. Somebody is asking, what about Dieburg SN? We are asking about food. Uh, what, sorry? Regarding food, we are asking in Germany. Food. <laughs> I mean, Germany, I mean, Western Europe, we have all food. <laughs> we have Indian restaurants in case, in case, in every city. But um, you can find everything for yourself. And it's a new trend to be vegan or vegetarian. So every single restaurant has options for that as well. You will always have a solution. But then get ready to pay. Yeah? So uh, your restaurants, if you don't cook at home, can end up being pretty costly. But if you cook at home, you can find groceries in huge supermarkets. In local supermarkets, we have Japanese shops, Indian restaurants. We have Korean restaurants. We have everything. You literally can find all of it. Yeah, okay. just research. So you are, you are <laughs> suggesting that they should know how to cook the food? Uh, not some suggestion, but I, I did it myself as a student. And uh, hey, expenses were super low in comparison. You can buy groceries for 100 euro a week for sure, pretty good. But if you go to restaurants, you spend 20, 30 euro per time. Uh, so <laughs> it depends, huh? It, you know what? Yeah. It's up to you. It's up to you. <laughs> it's yeah. gonna, you're going to learn the hard way as well. <laughs> so the next question is, uh, what is the basically uh, cost to your city in Germany? If you have to tell the three countries or three cities in the Germany, so what will be the three cities? The most expensive. Munich, and number mostly. one. Yeah. <laughs> and I would say Frankfurt and Hamburg are... Nearly the same. Okay, and the three cheapest cities if somebody wants to live? You know, I'm only considering the cities where my universities are because the rest, I don't know. But I would say the cheapest, uh, Leipzig, uh, Hamm, <laughs> Wallendar. <laughs> it's because oh. the, 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 most, the best school is there. But it's a small city. It's like university is the city. So... <laughs> Okay, so the next question is, just give me a second. Does a doctor any advantage in selection process of any school for an MBA? Uh, yeah, yes and no. Depends on the title and depends if it's accredited and if the future program requires you to have more ECTS points because this will add you ECTS points. Um, mostly... They will ask you questions in the interview, but they probably will prioritize you a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> okay. So next question is, what are the criteria if I want to apply for undergrad for business school? 
you need to complete 12th grade in Germany. Uh, 10th grade plus diploma is not accepted at all. You can forget about it. Only okay. not accredited universities accept it. So 12th grade must be there. Minimum 50% for low-ranked schools. Okay. The higher you go, the better. If you have 75% in 12th grade, it's good for any university. You need to know English. So even though you studied in English, many schools will demand IELTS anyway. And I recommend you to take it anyway. It's not bad to have a test on your CV. And it's also good for the embassy because you put more effort into your application. Minimum for bachelor is six IELTS, but I recommend you 6.5. Otherwise, you're not going to understand some books. So I learned from my experience. I had seven IELTS and I still was silent for one semester, just sitting and then listening like that. So, yeah. Uh, then you need to write a very good motivational statement, very good CV, and then you're going to be invited for an interview or exam, depends on the school, where you have to yeah. present yourself. Exactly. <laughs> that is must. Yeah. So the next question is, I am a chemical engineering graduate and nine year experience. Can I, uh, can I get admission in master's? Yeah, we come back to the first point we covered. Chemical exactly. engineering, you need to do master in chemical engineering unless you enter a program that requires work experience, which can compensate for your major, then you can do an MBA, or you can join a program that offers a pre-master, where they convert your chemical engineering degree into a business degree. Yep. You, can, you can't just skip. You must study the same major or you must study a preparation for a major to be able to continue. Um, so think what you want to do. Maybe you still want to do engineering. <laughs> there is a program which is pretty cool. It's um, in Esraha Heidelberg and Hamm. I think, yeah, in Hamburg maybe. Um, it's business and engineering. So okay. you can enter this program having or an engineering degree or business. Or business. So people who had business can learn engineering finally and people who knew engineering can learn business finally. So that's a pretty exactly. cool blended program as well. Yeah. So I think so we are having last, no, not last. I think so. <laughs> let, me, let me ask you. So MBA from University of Applied Science is cost effective compared to private colleges, but are they at a disadvantage in finding good jobs in IT se uh, sector or they have the same terms for job search? So public, private, are the, okay, that's a bit difficult to explain. So MBA degree is not a public degree. It's a private degree. It's always paid. You always pay. It's like 18,000 to 44,000 euro. And there is no free MBAs, unless in some exceptions, if you want to study in German fully. Um, okay. So uh, public universities can be, they're mostly STEM universities, classical universities. You have universities of applied sciences, which can be private or public. And then you have private universities, which can be business schools, engineering schools, universities of applied sciences. So in all these universities, MBA uh, is the same. You, because it's a private degree. It's applied approach degree anyway. It's always cost. But the differences of employability is the school and the ranking. <laughs> So that is not the question about the status of the school, if it's public or not. It's rather how well known is it, how well ranked and recognized it is. Do employers, heard, do they know about it? Did they hear about it? Um, so if they heard about it and it's a small private school, that's fine as well, no? Okay. So next question is, after applying for university, how much time it will take to receive the reply? In private universities, if you work with someone like me, uh, it can take 48 hours <laughs> or two okay. weeks. In public universities, it can take from three months to half a year. Three so months? again, you invest three months. You, three, three months up to six months. You invest either your money or your time. We come back to the same point. True. Yeah. So the next question is, uh, the doctor graduated in Ukraine. I have a question, please. And he has not write the question. I don't know. <laughs> so the next, next question time. is, could you please, ex please explain the foundation year program in Jacobs, Jacobs University? Uh, in Jacobs University. So some students don't qualify for direct bachelor. 
because of what we discussed before. Some people have 11 years of education instead of 12, so you must do it. This course prepares you to enter the bachelor program. They teach the subject, the starting subjects of the future program, uh, more business English, and in some instances, German as well. Um, it's a very good school, but it costs 20,000 euro per year. <laughs> but you have food and accommodation included, as far as I remember correctly. And my students were able to get scholarships uh, up to 12,000 euro. So it's fair. At the end, it becomes equal to the rest of the school. Yeah. It's a very good school. But any foundation is the same. It's either because you lack entry requirements or English, or you want to study, you're not ready yet for bachelor. So the next question is, is the level of TOEFL same as of the IELTS in Germany for Master in Science? So IELTS 6.5 is TOEFL, I think, 90 or 100. If you have okay. TOEFL 90 or 100, you're safe. Uh, okay. IELTS 6.5, you're safe. Okay. The rest? I have <laughs> seen that IELTS, if somebody is bringing IELTS 6.5, that is also getting paid. They're accepting 7 or 7.5. Uh, that is, they don't get failed because of IELTS. They get failed because of something else. Okay. Uh, minimum requirement to study master in Germany, 6.5 IELTS. Um, seven, I have not seen seven as a requirement apart from maybe Otto Basham School of Management and the Heinrich Hochschule Leipzig. But these schools require GMAT, six or 700. You cannot yeah. pass a GMAT with six or 700 if your IELTS is not seven. So that okay. cancels out itself because it's a test in English and it's super difficult. True. Next question is, does a high eyes give you good chances of getting admission? Uh, no. If you have minimum aisles, you will get in. But if you have eight aisles, like my student from Uzbekistan yesterday, you can get a scholarship. Oh. <laughs> Could you please explain? I think so. This question is done. And next is, can I go directly bachelor's in private universities without completing 13 years of education? It is not normal. Only uh, some universities do it because in Germany, it's not the same country. Uh, in every land of Germany, is different regulations for accepting international students. The easiest ones are in Nordrhein Westfalen. So schools okay. from Cologne, Dortmund or the ones who are registered there can, but then they will give you like a test or exam or DAD exam or something like that. But I can tell you it is not normal. Normal okay. is to do a studium colleague. Um. <laughs> uh, next is how can I study in Germany without the English exam eyes? You can uh, if the university and embassy accepts it. What can happen is university accepts it and then visa gets denied. <laughs> so it's maybe better not. India. Um, or um, it doesn't matter from where. If you studied in English, you need to submit a letter that you studied in English. Um, mostly this is meant by private universities, um, which are Canadian, American, Australian, British, etc. If you studied in English in English colony country, they will be suspicious a bit. So some schools will accept it. it maybe 80% of schools will accept it. But you will, if you get denied in visa, you will not know why. Because German embassy doesn't tell you why. So it might be that. But you will never know. So I always yeah. tell my students, just minimize your risk. 200 to 250 euro for a test is not worth the risk. Um, but yes, university accepts medium of instruction letters instead of IELTS. Okay. So the next question is, can I get full scholarship in top business schools in Germany if I get a good GMAT score? If you want a full scholarship, you need to submit 700 GMAT. Okay. And it won't be full. I think it will be maybe 50%. Um, then, what? because the thing is, the, the minimum for some nationalities is 700. So you're submitting the minimum, consequently, where is the justification for a scholarship? Um, because yesterday I also had this conversation with my student. He said, I want scholarship. And I said, okay, do you have a high GPA? No. Sport <laughs> achievements? No. Cultural achievements? No. Work experience? No. On which basis should a university give you a scholarship? You know? Exactly. So yeah. always find a reason why you're special. If that's the case, 
try your chances and apply for it. Uh, get high IELTS, get high GMAT, apply, 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 DAD scholarships, apply university scholarships separately. Maybe you can get uh, one scholarship in DAD, one at university, combine them and it becomes full. Yeah. Try that. Next question is, which German language certificate is the best for applying for master's and job in Germany? Is it which level? A2, I mean, B1, B2, C1 or C2? German certificate is not, is for job is not required. Nobody cares. They're just going to ask you on interview questions. If you understand them and can answer, okay. If not, they get out. No, <laughs> They don't care about the test. <laughs> but when you apply for a university, the TESDAF or DSH are the ones which are generally accepted. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> But I personally think if somebody is uh, want to job in Germany, then at least till B1 level they should know because they will not understand the question, whatever they know. Yes, knowing the language or passing the test are two different things. Exactly. When you apply for a job, nobody cares if you took a test or not. They only care if you speak. So you just need to speak. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so what is the age limit for master degree? There is no age limit. I placed three 45-year-olds in MBA already. So, unless you're 50, then I don't know. 45 was my limit. <laughs> okay. So the next question is, is there any internship for German teacher from India to Germany? Internship? What? Internship means a short uh, practice. No, I know, I know. Okay. No, we're talking about education. <laughs> okay. Uh, basically, yeah, about She's a German teacher from India and she's traveling to Germany. So she's asking that there is any internship there in Germany for Indian teachers. There are a lot of internships, but they're not going to sponsor your visa. Okay. On which basis they should hire you when there's so many Germans and Europeans out there who don't need visa. But if you're living in Germany, studying in Germany, doing an internship is easy because you are, your working rights are then equivalent to Europeans. Okay. Yeah? Coming like that from abroad is like, no. <laughs> yeah. If I came in Germany with job seeker visa, can I got job easily? Uh, you have only six months. So if you are searching for uh, blue, um, the, short, the lists of the jobs, which are like mathematician, IT, engineering degree, computer science, and you present your profile well, you will get a job within six months. Okay. For the rest of the jobs, I don't really think it's feasible. I okay. don't think, but you know what? Maybe you're strong. Your luck is good. You can do it. Yeah, maybe, but I just, no. I have seen really talented students struggling sometimes because, you know, we're coming back to the same point. If there is a shortage of skills, engineers, you know, IT, mathematicians, yes, you get a job easier, faster. But marketing, marketing managers, there's everywhere. There are German exactly. market managers, European market managers, people who don't need visa, Ukrainians now for Germany, you know. Hey, and then you. So, True. difficult. <laughs> Does EAP matter for getting study visa of Germany? What, sorry again? I didn't understand. Does GAP matter for getting study visa in Germany? GPA? GAP. He has written GAP. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. No, no, it doesn't matter. They don't care. They just want to know you have something to come back to. You have financial solvency. They want to know what did you do in between your studies or work, but they, it's not going to influence your decision. So it's never a reason to deny a student. If you have a valid reason, then they will allow you. No, nobody cares. They want to know what you want to do in the future. Are you going to okay. come back after to your country or not? That's more important for them than what you did in the past. Okay. Would you recommend attending online sessions? Uh, online classes? See, uh, right now, I hate all things are going on from Germany to India. If somebody has so, registered in German colleges, then they are giving studies only. So do you prefer, do you recommend that? Online, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't like it. My students who were supposed to fly and start, I understand now that they have to. True. It's fine. But by choice, I would never. <laughs> no. 
ओके ओके नेक्स्ट इज वॉट हाई जीएपी इन जर्मन स्टैंडर्ड जीपीए सो हाई जीपीए इफ यू वॉन्ट स्टडी मेडिसिन यू हैव टू हैव हंड्रेड परसेंट जीपीए um if you want to study the rest of the major 75% is high below 75% is considered low not low sorry it's considered full out of school <laughs> okay in 800 euro for living while studying in germany with that scholarship necessary uh i'm confused 800 euro is blocked account right exactly So what does the DAD have to do with it? They uh, he the person is having that scholarship. Yeah. And now he's asking if he want to uh, study in Germany and he has only eight hundred euro. So is it, it is necessary to spend all that money, or it is, or he will be saving from it as he is having the scholarship. His question is this. Okay. Uh, so. To be able to open visa in Germany, you must have blocked account or an alternative. Alternative if it covers you the same amount as the blocked account. But again, eight yeah. hundred is enough for small cities, but it's not enough for big cities. So it depends on your spending and if you have to pay for university or not. If yeah. you have, then you're definitely yeah. out of the picture. If you don't have to pay, then yeah, you can try. You can do part-time yeah, so job, finally, you know, get a little bit more financing. Yeah. So finally, we are having last question. Woo-hoo! The last question is. I have completed bachelor degree now I want to do master degree in Germany how many year master degree and total costing what will be the costing because I need to know the major what is the costing is a new question for you hey i he needs to know the major he wants to do public or private uh, i need to know how many years was his bachelor degree what was his gpa and then yeah. i can tell you how much but if you want to study in private universities uh, 6 to 12000 euro per year in english language um if you want to study two years you have to have a, a three year bachelor if you want to study one year you have to have a two year uh, four year bachelor so it's always compensates it's together always um how many five it's always five yeah bachelor and master together is five years three year bachelor in your case two year master in germany four year bachelor in your case one year master in germany um, okay Now another question is coming up. One more question okay. is there. Is it better to do UG or PG in Germany? What is the better choice? Both are good. Germany is the best country to go to study abroad, especially now these days. And okay. it depends on your financing. If you can afford it, if you're a fighter, if you're willing to work during your studies, because otherwise, um, four years okay. is much more expensive than two years. uh but if you want to leave as soon as possible and you can't sleep at night because you think about how much you want to study in germany then go <laughs> it's up to you. there's no such thing as better different degrees different levels mm-hmm. it, is it the right time for you to go is it do you want to go now or do you want to go later <laughs> so guys i all right uh, you have answered all the questions so thank you so much for coming here and mm-hmm. answering my students questions so thank you so much and it was amazing Anytime. it was amazing Thank you so much. I hope so. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good Bye-bye. day and please feel free to contact me. Bye bye. So guys that's it for today's video i hope you liked it and whatever question you have asked me i have put in front of her to answer so thank you so much for your questions and i hope that we both have given you answers to the best uh, best level and see you in the next video till then stay tuned and keep learning german with german can